Welcome to the Super Memory for Schools program. My name is Pham Nguyen Thuy Ang. I'm a chemistry teacher in high school for gifted sports and physical education, Ho Chi Minh City. Today, we will learn together lesson 36 of 10th grade chemistry. It's reaction rate. In this part, we will learn about influencing factors of the reaction rate. Those factors include the first is concentration. The second is the pressure of the reaction. The third is the temperature of the reaction. The fourth is the contact surface of the reactants. And the fifth is catalysts. First, we will learn about the effect of concentration on reaction rates. Let's watch this video. There are two test tubes. One contains 2 milliliters and the other contains 4 milliliters of sodium thiosulfate solution, 0.1 m. Adding 2 milliliters of distilled water to test tube 1, we get 4 milliliters of sodium thiosulfate solution, 0.05 m. Then we add 4 milliliters of sulfuric acid solution, 0.1 m, to each test tube at the same time. Let's compare the rate of creating precipitates in two test tubes and then conclude. Through this video, you can see that when the reactant concentration increases, the reaction rate also increases. Here's one of the factors you should remember. That is, when the concentration increases, reaction rate will increase too. The second influence factor of reaction rates is the pressure. We have the following example to see the decomposition reaction of Hi to H2 and I2. They conduct this reaction based on the two following experiments. In the first experiment, the pressure of Hi is 1 atm. In the second experiment, the pressure of Hi is 2 atm. As we can see in the first experiment, the reaction rate is 1.88 times 10 to the negative 8 molars per liter second. In the second experiment, with the pressure of 2 atm, the reaction rate is 4.88 times 10 to the negative 8 molars per liter second. From two experiments above, you can see that when the pressure increases, the reaction rate increases too. And please note that the pressure just affects the reaction rate if the reactants are gases. You need to remember this note. And the third factor we will learn about is temperature. Let's watch this video. Prepare two pairs of test tubes. In each pair, one test tube contains 4 milliliters of sodium thiosulfate solution, 0.1 m and the other contains 4 milliliters of sulfuric acid, 0.1 m. We soak the first pair into a cup of hot water. After a while, we take out those two test tubes. Then we pour sulfuric acid solution into the sodium thiosulfate solution of each pair correspondingly. You will observe the rate of forming precipitates in two test tubes and conclude.
From the experiment, we can see that when the temperature of the reaction increases, the reaction rate increases too. Let's move on to the fourth influence of factor, which is the contact surface. Let's watch the following video together. Two test tubes contain the same amount of limestone. The size of limestone particles in one test tube is smaller than that in the other test tube. Then we add hydrochloric acid solution, which has the same volume and concentration, into the two test tubes of limestone. Let's compare the reaction rate in two test tubes. We will have a comment on the reaction time which happened in two test tubes and come to a conclusion. From the experiment, we can see that when the contact area surface of reactants increases, the reaction rate increases too. And now, we will learn about the last influencing factor, which is the catalyst. Let's watch this video together. So today, I will show you an experiment about the effect of catalyst on reaction rates. The catalyst we use in experiment today is manganese dioxide in the decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, let's start the experiment. I used a wooden clamp to hold the test tube. I add about 20 drops of hydrogen peroxide to the test tube. The concentration of the solution which I use is about 10%, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, now I will add a little manganese dioxide into the test tube. You should note that in this reaction, I only add a little, just a little manganese dioxide. Please don't add too much. Well, it's hard to get a little manganese dioxide. Can you see the black color of manganese dioxide? Now I add manganese dioxide into the test tube. Let's watch. You shouldn't look at the tube directly, just in the near distance. Please keep it a bit far from you. Okay, three, two, one, start. You can see the phenomenon, right? What is this phenomenon? Are these air bubbles? Well, very fast and lead to, let's touch. You can feel that's very hot. When the tube heats up, this air bubbles and white water vapor appear here, maybe because the water evaporates. The water turns into white gas. See, it's very hot if we touch in the middle of the tube. So you should add a little amount when doing this experiment. So manganese dioxide is the catalyst, isn't it? It can degrade the activation energy of the hydrogen peroxide decomposition reaction. And then it leads to the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into H2O and O2. And this white gas is oxygen gas. We all know that the catalyst doesn't disappear after the reaction, do you? However, its catalytic ability can be reduced. If we don't shake the tube for a while, we can see that the manganese dioxide solid will settle in the bottom of the test tube and the solution on the top is transparent. However, in this case, the manganese dioxide is very small and it moves around, so the solution will have black color. Is it alright? No, it's not. The solution doesn't include the solid because if the power settles in the bottom, we will see that the solution is transparent. So we can see that the catalyst can increase the reaction rate. And we can understand that the catalyst is the substance that can help the reaction rate run faster, but it isn't changed after the reaction. That's the end of our lesson today. See you in the next lessons of the Super Memory for Schools program.